we still um, are potentially underestimating the instability of the ice sheets. For starters, polar ice sheets in Greenland are melting at five times the pace of just a few years ago. IPCC has greatly revised its estimates of how unstable the Greenland ice sheet was. Why should you care? What's up here is history, various times in the past, and along the top is the CO2 level at some interval in history, and along the side is the sea level that accorded with that. Now, if you do the absolute stupidest thing, which is you take the modern CO2, you run it over to the equivalent temperature from the linear interpolation, and you ask where 10% of the world's population is. I think it's fair to say that this is reason enough to be studying ice sheets and sea level. While it takes a lot of ice to melt to raise ocean levels, they say that is in fact happening. We have to keep additional warming less than about one degree Celsius if we want those ice sheets to stay, to stay close to their present size. Greenland is very tightly tied to temperature, and if it gets too hot, it goes away. And too hot is not very many degrees above where we are now. New research concludes that Antarctica is melting. The uh, ice sheets, for example, like Pine Island Glacier, are rapidly thinning, and the thinning is uh, accelerating and it's spreading further and further inland. Until now, we haven't had direct measurements of how warm the water is or how fast that ice is melting. After five years of study and preparation, an international team of researchers has drilled through 500 meters of ice to install a series of instruments below the ice shelf to measure both ice loss and the temperature, salinity, and speed of the water. At one location, they found melt rates of more than two inches per day. The last time it was two to three degrees Celsius warmer than it is now, sea level was about 25 meters higher. That's 80 feet. I have seen new paleoclimatic data that show that parts of, of the East Antarctic ice sheet, the one that is really considered very stable, uh, they have uh, been lost in the Pliocene. That's clearly demonstrated by uh, some very convincing sediment data. In the Pliocene era, some three to five million years ago, atmospheric levels of CO2 were similar to those humans are seeing today. Yet sea levels were much higher. New data from ocean sediments indicates that warm temperatures during the period may have partially melted ice sheets, even the East Antarctic ice sheet, which scientists have up till now assumed to be very resistant to melt. Dr. Karis Cook described her recent findings to me. From what we know about how ice sheets erode bedrock um, and deposit sediments on uh, offshore into the ocean, um, in order to erode those bedrocks, the ice sheet must have been retreated several hundred kilometers inland. There was no ice on Greenland, and that accounts for about five meters of global sea level. The West Antarctic ice sheet as well was probably gone, um, and that accounts for about five or six meters of global sea level. Now, what our retreat from the East Antarctic ice sheet did was that contributed an extra 10 meters of global sea level. So in total, you were looking at between 20 and 22 meters higher than they are today. Now that wouldn't happen instantly, but we could get several meters of sea level rise in one century. In fact, the last time that ice sheets uh, disintegrated is 14,000 years ago. Sea level went up 20 meters in 400 years. So that's one meter every 20 years. Geologist Dr. Julie Brigham Greta has collected sediment cores in the Arctic regions from a unique Siberian lake that show similar implications for the Pliocene era and our own. We, we're seeing intervals in the Arctic back through the last few million years that are much, much warmer than anyone expected. So what this means is that when the, the West Antarctic ice sheet pulls back, we see a corresponding warmth in the high latitudes again, probably affecting the size of the Greenland ice sheet with major implications for changes in sea level. If we go back to the Pliocene, when we had forest, a forested Arctic, probably no Greenland ice sheet, we're looking at a, a very long-term 
um, environmental situation when carbon dioxide may have been 400 parts per mil like we are today. The value of our record is looking at the fact that the Arctic can become very quickly as warm, very warm, and that that warmer environment is, is reaching a point where uh, uh, increasing melt of places like Greenland and the West Antarctic Ice Sheet are, are almost inevitable.